Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War's Double Trouble subtitle is the first declassified hint that this game is packing a wealth of launch content. Unlike the last Black Ops outing, the campaign is back, with support from a wide variety of multiplayer modes, nerve-testing zombies, and some upcoming Warzone synergy to boot. Here's everything you need to know about Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. The campaign is primarily set in the early 1980s with some familiar and some less familiar Black Ops characters. Behind the screens, comic-loving screenwriter David S. Goyer of Blade and Batman Begins fame tackles the scripting duties for this direct sequel to the original Black Ops. Black Ops fans will like that Alex Mason is one of the playable characters. But this is COD, which means you can safely expect to play from multiple perspectives whether going loud, staying quiet, or sniping from afar. You even get to help create one of the playable characters, Bell. Cosmetic choices spliced with gameplay impacting psych profiles that are best matched to your playstyle. Like to run and gun? Then gun for faster aim down sights and movement speed while targeting. There are some other campaign choices that have a hard hitting impact too. And it wouldn't be Black Ops without a little psychedelic weirdness. Our source is right. We could be looking at an Intel gold mine. Jump around in time as you hunt down the elusive Perseus who, like any good 80s villain, has dreams of nuclear rebirthing the world. Along the way, collect evidence to tackle optional side missions in a globetrotting storyline that culminates in reality-bending revelations. Stick to the shadows in certain missions and avoid conflict, or kill everyone. Relocating bodies and optional enemy tagging means the ninja path is viable too, while lockpicking makes infiltration easier. Expect a mix of long-range engagements, close quarters shotguns to turn red menaces into red mist, and a liberal smattering of big explosion splatterings. There's also the odd classic slow-mo moment while armored foes slow down the slaughter and make for mag-dumping mini-boss fights. It wouldn't be a Black Ops game without zombies, and there are some big changes to play with this time around. For starters, forget about starting with this solitary choice of a pistol secondary as your primary fighting option. Customize or grab a pre-made loadout to make the initial fight even less fair on the deadheads. Don't feel too sorry for them though, because that'll soon shift as you jump between dimensions. Mercifully, objective markers make next steps clearer, even as the threat of the slightest misstep leading to your demise looms larger. Some of the better zombie killing options can be nabbed off walls I'll walk the valley of death with this. while full ammo is a mere 250 points away for base shooters. Still, those points may be better spent on rolling the dice at the magic box, investing in the Perca-Cola vending machines, and ensuring your weapons get a pack-a-punch upgrade. You go down though, and those hard-earned perks start to tick away. To help stay upright for the fight, Collect salvage from dead Zeds and spend it at the Arsenal Mannequin, on either armor or weapon rarity upgrades. Or you can drop some points on upgrades at the crafting table. If you do want to call it quits, you can eventually call in a chopper exfil, but you'll have to earn your ticket home by battling off the deadliest wave of horrors yet. Be sure to spend those hard-earned Aetherium crystals on skills upgrades that'll help out in future fights. For a less frantic alternative to mowing down waves of the undead, kick off your undead felling on the beach in the twin-stick shooter Dead Ops Arcade. Like zombies, you can go it alone for a tougher fight, or throw in up to three other players for co-op shenanigans. Whether you start in zombies, cut your teeth in multiplayer, or straddle the two, progress in Black Ops Cold War is unified. So whatever you play, you're leveling up overall, plus unlocking weapons, attachments, perks, and wildcards. This unified logic also ties over to crossplay, so consolers and PC players can battle with and against each other, and cross-progression covers those waiting for a next-gen upgrade or Battle Pass players in Warzone. Speaking of Warzone, check back in at the start of Season 1 on December 10 to put your leveled-up Black Ops Cold War weapons to good use with other free post-launch content. For the multiplayer main event in Black Ops Cold War, there's a mix of familiar objective-based modes and solo or team-based fragfests. On the new front, test your nerve in the single life VIP escort as you're tasked with taking a lightly armed player to an extraction point VIP has cleared the hot zone. or taking them out if you're on the defending team. For something less intimate and far more frantic, try Dirty Bomb. 
This 40 player mode pits 10 squads against each other on big maps, with fighting concentrated around a handful of uranium deposits. Tanks and gunboats make an appearance in the large scale 24 player combined arms mode as you fight over one or multiple objectives. Whatever mode is more your speed, take advantage of the ping system to spot enemies or points of interest and know that you can absolutely melt enemies underwater. Between rounds, Combo Creator Class and Gunsmith together to give your fragging a personalized touch. There's a lot of variety in Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War's content at launch. And with the first season of post-launch content kicking off in December, there's plenty to keep you busy with between now and then. For more on Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, check out IGN's reviews of the campaign, multiplayer and zombies modes. And for everything else, stick with IGN. PlayStation.